Okay, good morning everybody and uh, welcome to our uh, course on Christian counseling. It's so pleasant to see all of you. Um, and I'd also like to welcome all our students on the e-learning portal for this, uh, for this class. Uh, I really hope that the next couple of weeks as we discuss about Christian counseling, we all will be enriched and we will grow in greater understanding. We will be equipped with skills also as we um, explore this course. Um, so just uh, quickly, maybe one or two introductions that would be helpful for us to uh, you know, have some form of an interaction. So if you're comfortable, a quick switch on of your video and just your name and where you're from and maybe what you're doing. A couple of minutes and then we can move ahead. Who can we start with? Jafina, you're on mute. You're on mute. Yes, Pastor. <laughs> I'm sure you already know me. So I'm Jafina from Tamil Nadu. All right. Welcome, Jafina. Yes. Anybody else? Be nice to just know your names, maybe just a quick show of your face. Anybody else? Hi, ma'am. I'm Divya. Hi, Divya. Uh, yeah, I'm basically from Kerala. Um, okay. But now in US. Yeah. All right. Thank I you. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, Hi, Subhashish. Uh, I'm from Patna. Welcome. Welcome, Subhashish. Lubega. Praise Lord, ma'am. Hi, hi, Ruby. Yes, ma'am. Myself, Rivika. I'm from Odisha, Orkila. Okay, welcome. Welcome, Ruby. Okay. Hi, Pastor. Hi, Pastor John Paul. I'm John Paul. <laughs> I'm basically from Kerala at present in Mangalore. Okay. Welcome, welcome, Pastor. Uh, anybody else? Or we could get started. Yes, Lubega, you're on mute, sir. You're on mute. Okay, my name is Lubega Colin. I'm in Kigali, Rwanda. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. What time is it there? Right, right now the time is uh, uh, twenty. It is twenty-seven minutes to to, to seven. 27 minutes to 7. That's in the evening, I suppose, right? It is in the morning. 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 Oh, morning. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So welcome. Welcome, everybody. Welcome the rest of you as well. Um, we'll keep going. Um, so I think, you know, in while we, are, uh, while we start with this class, I think one of the most important ways or methods that we can learn better in this is through interaction. Uh, counseling is not something that actually is really a teaching subject. It is actually a doing subject, you know, something that um, you need to be involved in. So uh, the, the better the learning when the participation is greater. So I'd really want to encourage all of you to stay uh, keen to participate because I think that's how you will learn. That's how your classmates will learn. That's how I'm also going to learn as we go forward uh, through this. All right. Uh, give me a minute and I'll just, um, I'd like to just uh, uh, share my screen. Just give me a minute. Are you all able to see my screen? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. All right. 
OK. All right. So I think we'll uh, just get started. Um, sorry, I'm just going to be moving through a couple of slides. Uh, just um, you know, just just getting straight into the important things. Okay. Now, even as we before we get started, I'm going to um, bring about a certain question or a you know a scenario to you and help. And I'd like you all to tell me how would you respond. Now, this is this is a scenario. There is a woman who comes to you. Her name is Susan. Okay, and she comes to you and she says this. Okay, she's sharing something with you. And I'd like you to think about how is it that you're going to respond. Okay, so Susan says, I don't know what's wrong with my husband. He just doesn't allow me enough space to just be me. He always wants to pry into what I'm doing, who I'm talking to. I'm having quite enough. I have second thoughts about this marriage. Okay, so this is what uh, Susan's told you. Um, quickly take around 30 seconds to quickly write down what is it, how would you respond to Susan? So basically, you're going to write down a statement that you will be. Suppose I'm Susan and I'm talking to you right now and I've told you this. I want you to come back and write and state to me what is it that you would if I'm Susan. Okay, so 30 seconds quickly put this down on your paper. And uh, I'd like to hear some responses. Okay, don't worry. There's no right, wrong, correct, best answers. Remember, we're learning, and that's what we are attempting to do. Okay, so go ahead. Yes, thirty seconds. OK, if any of you are ready to answer, please you know, quickly unmute and answer. Don't wait for anybody else. Just quickly unmute and respond, OK? So we don't waste too much of time, and we can, we can optimize our time here. Yes, go ahead, Divya. Go ahead. Yes, what would you say? Yeah, yeah I think I will ask her a question back. Uh, okay. uh, just to know, uh, like, uh, since I have only one side of the issue, so I just want to know, like, uh, how much time do you talk to each other? Okay, so you will bring forth a question. You would want to know some more information. How much time do you talk to each other? Good attempt, Divya. All right. Thank you. Uh, the others? I would ask her, what does the Bible talk about the second thought? about this marriage what is the bible perspective about uh -huh. her that okay. will help her to get engaged into talking and then i will tell her so we need to talk to him and then we involve we go to other steps but i would tell her that second thought is not there we wouldn't okay. have it all right so you would question the second thoughts that she has or ask her what does the bible say about it okay thank you i think rosalind has written you'd say be patient susan don't jump to this conclusion okay Good attempts. Others, come on. I think there are some 12, 13 of us in the, in the group. And I'd like, I'd like to hear answers. So don't worry about right, wrong. This is learning. And this is where you can just, just make attempts. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think I will try to calm her down a bit. <laughs> she okay. looks very frustrated with the situation. So I may say, uh, Susan, you look quite frustrated. I understand your situation. Uh, OK. Let's just talk about it, and maybe that helps, I think. I'm not sure. Okay. okay, wonderful. So Jafina says, I'll just not get into any of the details. I'll just uh, be with her, be present with her, with the emotion she's going through, and just uh, help her to calm down, and just help her to maybe discuss more. Wonderful, Jafina. Thank you. Yes, what about the others? Yes, um, I will tell her that um, she cannot develop a fence around herself because as long as she is married, yeah, she has to cope with her husband and at least the husband desire or deserves the right to know a little mm -hmm. bit, not maybe all, but a little bit about what she is doing. So mm -hmm. let her don't build a concrete wall around herself. It can be okay. not good for a marriage. 
Okay. All right. So, so I. No, it's okay. Wonderful. I'm, I I like the, your answers. Okay. Others. Um, I, I would say uh, thank you for uh, choosing to open up, and it is very important that we open up. And I would appreciate her heart to uh, start sharing, and would like to know more details, a uh, little more details about this. So I'll patiently listen uh, what she has to say and give her a chance to open up. So first appreciate and then listen. Okay, so you would appreciate. Thank her for actually coming and opening up and talking and uh, you know give her that space to talk and listen good good any other any other uh, answers okay so what i'd like you to uh, um, so these are generally some of the common responses that we've heard and i think you know it may sum up some of the things that Sorry, it may sum up some of the things that uh, you have also written, right? So some of the common responses you would you would hear, like you all rightly said, is sorry, are you able to see my screen? No, it's gone off, isn't it? Yeah, no, just now it was. It's gone off. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Give me a minute, sorry. Okay, so some of the common responses, like we said. Um, you would definitely hear is um, uh, uh, what we would call like maybe an advice giving. Okay, that's what we would do. We would give an advice, and some of them, some of the responses that we had is, um, you know, you shouldn't build a wall around yourself, or uh, you know, um, the, it's not something that you need to think about. A, a second marriage is something uh, that you shouldn't be thinking about. So. The, some of the responses that we given are quite in the place of giving an advice. Okay, uh, the second kind of responses that we may given is in the form of a question. Like some of you said, I would ask her more details. Uh, you know, what are yours? What is your situation really like? What does your husband say? I need to know what he's going through. What's happening? So that's the second kind. Okay, so there may be questions. The third kind of uh, responses that we may we may see is a kind of response that we tend to moralize. Okay, so what do we mean by moralizing? Is that uh, you know this may not be the right thing for you to do? Uh, A, B, C, D are the steps that you need to go. And and I think we commonly see this among us as believers, where we are often moralizing somebody who's actually discussing a problem with us. Um, so that's the third part of it, you know, moralizing. The fourth part, uh, part just being in a place of silence, uh, you know, not knowing what to say. And I think some of us didn't have anything to say. So we're like, okay, what am I going to do right now? Maybe the best thing to do is just keep quiet. So that's also a response, you know, when you don't bring about a response. The fifth kind of response, which some of you said was, um, you know, just hear her out. Uh, some of you said appreciation. Some of you said, you know, you will join and, and acknowledge what she is going through, uh, help her to bring about some sense of a calm and working up, right? Now, all of these are responses. But what we are looking at is to, uh, we need to really. Action, as well as that brings about change uh, at some point in the life of the of the uh, counselee who's coming to you. Okay. Now I'm not going to make um, any kind of a, a what do you say a, a, a judgment on any of your responses. We will come back to this question a little later. Okay. But I'd like you to think about your own responses and look for yourselves to see whether your responses, what you feel your responses are. Has it, is it effective? Is it somewhat effective? Or has it been really effective? Now, how do you judge this is when, when you understand your next line from your uh, from your counseling okay so that's something i'd like you to keep a thought on keep um 
can all of you hear me or is it just uh, divya who's unable to hear me can all of you hear uh, me i can hear you pastor but in between your voice went off and it came back again okay all right yeah. i Okay in case there is another issue please stop me and let me know i think it's it's maybe a glitch in my um if there is a problem just somebody just uh, yeah thanks okay so um so i'm going to come it's back better. to this it's very better. it's better yeah. it's better okay so i'm going to better. come back to this example in a couple of classes and we are going to be looking at the same example and we'll work through uh work through that uh, once again okay so uh, uh another question that i have for you what do you think what do you think is counseling what have you um what in your reading or in the way that you've dealt with people do you think is counseling so some quick answers what is counseling giving guidance giving guidance okay other responses uh i think counseling is not advising as you already said but okay. i think it's just letting them know that they are there and uh, let's help them to uh, understand the situation maybe maybe okay. they don't understand it but, but when we speak maybe they can figure it out there okay all right thank you yes what about the others uh i think rosal is written to listen to someone first before giving them some help okay so counseling is a lot about uh being able to listen subhashish says giving time and listening okay other other uh, thoughts counseling is all about hearing somebody who has a challenge and mm -hmm. guiding her or him through finding mm -hmm. a suitable answer for him or, or for herself okay all right thank you so that that was some wonderful attempts okay so before we figure out what counseling is i want to help you to understand what counseling is not okay uh, and so the first and foremost giving advice and it is not or it is not giving answers to their problems so you as a counselor who's sitting there um is not taking the position of a person who is aware and knows it all you and i know that you and i don't know everything right our um our um, leading and guiding comes number one i think we need to understand that from the holy spirit and secondly from the word of god and what we are doing as a counselor is to open up these avenues for a person so that that would mean to help them to discover these answers or discover the solutions that they may have for their problems okay so counseling is not giving advice or answers to problems counseling is not being judgmental what do i mean by being judgmental and i think often we we hear this word is not telling or not letting a person know that they are in the wrong or they are in the right that's not what counseling is this is not mentorship this is counseling so you're not in a place or counseling is not the uh, the ministry is not one where you're sitting as a judge and saying hey this is something that you're doing wrong this is something that you may need to change your course of action into that's not the place that we have as a counselor okay next one it's not you counseling is not the counselor attempting to sort out the problems of the client you are not in a place where you're taking onus or responsibility for the problem of your client or your counseling right the 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 problem needs to be owned by your counselee they need to come to a place of saying okay this is a problem i have i want to sort this out myself by the assistance by the help or the facilitation of a counselor all right so it is not it's not you as a counselor taking on the problems of the client okay um 
the counseling is not expecting or encouraging a counselee to behave in a way that you would have behaved if you were confronted with a similar problem in your life. OK, once again, counselling is not uh, something you would do in your situation. Uh, if you were faced with the same problem. Like, for example, let's say in Susan's case, maybe you had a time in your marriage that you faced something similar. So it's not saying, you know, this is the way that I faced it and maybe that's the way that you go. It's not expecting or encouraging them to do the same. It is also, counselling is not also getting emotionally involved with the client. So much so that you are, are working harder than your counselee in order to solve their problem, right? Or you are stepping ahead of their progress in order to work things for your counselee. It is having a sense of involvement, but also a sense of healthy detachment from emotionally getting involved. Because you and I know when we get emotionally involved, we probably, you know, run on fourth gear. You know, we are actually really speeding and going really fast. So being careful not to be emotionally involved. And also, uh, counseling is not looking at a counselee's problem from your own perspective or based on your own value system. OK, uh, yes your perspective or the values that you hold are very strong, but you are looking at the person's problem independent from the system, from your perspectives or the, or the kind of values that you hold. So then what is counseling? The most important, uh, and I think some of you had written that in the chat, the most important thing of counseling is it is, it is, a, it is a purposeful conversation that you engage in with your counselee. And it is for the sole purpose of helping them help themselves. OK, I'll repeat that. There are two important characteristics here. Counselling is a purposeful conversation. So a purposeful conversation happens when there are good questions, when there are ways to help your counselee reflect on their own situation, reflect on their own contribution, reflect on their own needs, right? So that's what that purposeful uh, conversation comes to be. And what you are doing is helping your counselee to help themselves. You're bringing them or you're equipping them to a stage where they will begin to help themselves. So, so this the the uh, as you will see you know as we move ahead in class you will see that counseling is more a relationship it is a uh, like we say in the you know in psychological terms it's called a therapeutic relationship it's a relationship that brings about change it's a relationship that supports okay so counseling is seen as a supportive relationship which means you as a counselor have a big role to play in the development of the change that the person is going to see. So your role as a counselor is very, uh, very crucial, very vital in bringing the person to some, uh, to some place of positive change. So in that relationship, what are you doing? You're enabling your counselee to focus on a couple of things, on their feelings, on their thoughts, on their experiences and on their behavior. OK, once again, you are enabling your counselee to focus on how they are feeling in a certain situation, in how they're thinking or reasoning in a certain situation, what they're experiencing or how they behave in a certain situation. OK, so uh, quickly, I, I think you're having inner wholeness as a class this time. I want you to remember that, you know, as we function as people, there are three parts of us. There is the body, the mind, the uh, soul, as well as the spirit. So whenever we come to a certain problem, there are all of these components that interact with our problem. You know, there is the body. Uh, like, for example, let's say you have a fight with somebody. You just feel so tired and drained. You have a headache. You know, you feel dizzy. Your body is interacting with the problem right or your soul 
you know you you feel you feel very distressed uh, you're not able to think you're not able to concentrate you're not able to make your decision and your your spirit side of it you know the, your spiritual relationship with god that gets also affected when you are having certain problems right so remember that it's not just about giving answers but being enab enabling the counselee to focus on these three specific areas okay counseling is a trustful relationship so in your relationship with your counselee the the counselee needs to feel empowered that they can move from a place of understanding of their problem into a place of resolving their problem through some kind of action okay and that happens when they are in a place of complete trust when they know that they can trust the person that they're talking to and the person is going to help them move into understanding their problem moving it into a place of action or empowering them to move into a place of action okay i'm going to stop here for two to one minute just to um, just to quickly um, have and you all have any questions at this point before i move on if not you can give me a thumbs up and let's uh, dive right in Unfortunately, I can't see any thumbs up. So, so I'm no questions. Okay, great. All right. So, I I hope this has this has given you some bit of a basic foundation to really understand uh, where where you're at. Okay. Now, uh, this this hour, I'd like to quickly move through um, certain core elements when we're looking at biblical counseling. What are some of the core elements that we are going to be looking at? And um, in the next hour, I'd like to look at certain principles. Okay, um, if you are following through on the book, I am at page uh, three. Yes, I'm at page three. If you'd like to just follow through. Okay, so when we're looking at biblical counseling, we we know that um, uh, uh, counseling is a fundamental. A task or an activity that that is seen even in church. It needs to be church church based, right? Because people, if if we if we all we are all humans and we all can uh, are bound to have difficulties. We're bound to have problems, and we have the word. We have. Uh, scripture. We have the Holy Spirit. We have God who guides us and helps us through. Okay, so counseling is an activity that must be based um, on 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 the on the different um, uh, offices at, at church also. Okay, so it's going to be scripturally, it's going to be sound scripturally. What we counsel comes straight from scripture, from the teaching of the of the Bible, from doctrines that are that are in the Bible. Okay, it is also that there are other components that we use in the context of biblical counseling, and that's what we would ensure that it takes place. Now, counseling often is um, is something that is also a gifting to people, just as much as it's a skill that you need to learn. All right, you may be gifted at talking and um, uh, helping people, you know, understanding what goes on, but it's also something that is a skill that uh, one one needs to one needs to learn. So let's let's look at there are there are scripture portions that's given in your notes. I'm not going to go through each of them. Uh, you can take time to go back and read it, uh, you know, at your at your own pace. So the first and foremost thing we we understand and we keep as the biggest element of biblical counseling is that God is at the center of counseling, and um, we know that God is is uh, the God of the Bible, the God that we believe in. Um, that is foundational to every issue, to every problem, to every uh, counseling, or to every suggestion, everything that happens within the framework of counseling, we see that God is fundamental to it. And everything that he speaks is foundational to that. Okay. So our uh, we we also say that every discipline, every discipline that we are drawing from, 
So when you are into counseling, you're going to be drawing in from some kind of medical science. You're going to be drawing in from uh, humanities, you know, things like sociology, psychology, psychology, anthropology. There may be certain things that you are going to be drawing from as you as you uh, are in this ministry of counseling. But we we keep that as a as a core understanding that all these disciplines are under the authority of scripture and nothing supersedes what is written in scripture so like for example if we're even going to be looking at psychology there are there are going to be certain theories or principles or things that may not be sound scripturally so we do check and we do bring it all under the authority of scripture under the discipline of scripture so so even when you're using maybe certain methods or techniques <laughs> excuse me uh, you would be um, ensuring that it comes under the the authority or coming un under the bracket under the umbrella of what scripture teaches okay the third one is um, as we look Unable to hear you, ma'am. Am I audible? Yeah, right now, yeah. yes. OK. So when we look at uh, problems, when we look at uh, problems that counsel counselees do come, come by, we look at it as um, the, the primary concern or the primary problem is sin. OK? And we know and we understand that there is uh, total depravity that brings about a sinful nature and that is essential for us to understand so the sin nature of man is important for us to understand what the problem is that uh, or, or what the condition is uh, you know that people are presenting with so that's something that we we keep alert to that sin is the primary concern that needs to be dealt with okay the fourth one uh, the most important one is we know that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the only answer for every problem, for every uh, problem of the soul, for problem of the spirit, problem of the body. And that is the fundamental need of every person. OK. And we know um, uh, because of the work of Jesus on the cross, um, we know that that there is freedom from every kind of struggle and problems that one may come with. Now, these are uh, what we believe in, and these are certain elements that we that we hold on to. The fifth is to know that change, uh, when a person is going through a process of change, it should aim at a progressive sanctification, which is something that comes in time. So. Um, the ultimate goal is to help a person or help a counselee <clears throat> to come to a place of Christ likeness. Okay, and that's the fundamental aim of a, of a biblical of a Christian counselor to bring up the, the purpose of an individual is to bring them in likeness and to bring them into the likeness of Christ Jesus through the change cross process. And so we see that the change process is progressive, may not be may not be in all cases instantaneous. It may not happen in a flash of a second within maybe one session. It may take some take a couple of sessions, some take maybe years, some may you know drop off in between. But we understand, we aim at the fact that you know, whatever the work that we're doing, it is to bring them to uh, a place where they are more. Christ-like in nature. Okay, um, I'm, I'm going to just bring take take off some of those. Okay, um, so even as we've spoken about this, um, I'm going to be looking at some of the basic um, tenets. What are some of the basic tenets that that we look in when we are talking about effective biblical counseling? Okay. Um, all right. Okay. So the first and foremost. Um, uh, a point that, that I'd like to bring up here is of the Holy Spirit's ministry as the counselor and comforter. So for us as believers, that's something 
um, we stand by that it is the power of the Holy Spirit that gives us who are engaging in this ministry of counseling. That's that's where we get our help and our every knowledge, every wisdom from. Okay, and that is um, our uh, uh, you know our example. The, the the ministry of the Holy Spirit is uh, the biggest example for us because as a believer in many cases you know as as we journey through life uh, we know how the holy spirit gives us the wisdom at the right time gives us the comfort that we need at the right time gives us a revelation of his word at the right time maybe a step into the right direction at the right time so those are our principles you know as as we as we work through this and, and something that we encourage even our counselees to, to work with, to tap into is to finally look at the power of the Holy Spirit as uh, the ultimate counsellor. And we as, as, uh, as people are just his spokespersons or being used by the Holy Spirit to work through this entire process of biblical counselling. <clears throat> the second point is um, that the Bible is the sole and the sufficient authority in counseling and dealing with problems of people. So we go back to scripture at all points of time. So the goal of biblical counseling is to give instructions from scripture or for your counselee to be able to find those instructions so that they can finally live the purposes that God has called them for their lives, okay? So it is based on the, the uh, instructions, the directions, um, the understanding that is given through the word of God. So it's almost, it's, it's like your, um, uh, it's like your textbook, okay? It is, it is a textbook for life. So it is the book of how you, you develop not relationship, um, uh, with him as well as with others. So it is designed, the, the scripture is designed to bring about change or it's to bring about an alteration in the life of the one who's a believer, who's one with God, okay? Because we, we know and we understand as uh, scripture shows us that the word of God is the inspired, the infallible word of God. So we know what scripture does, it's, it, it has truth in it, uh, it is all sufficient, it, it has all authority, um, that, that is, that is this, the standards are never, uh, you know, do not change as a result of time or season or situation. Um, that is what we hold on to. So, so we know that scripture brings about correction, uh, brings about uh, rebuking, brings about growth, um, brings about guidance, brings about uh, ev every kind of need that we have. All right. So, so scripture is one thing that we 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 turn to. So that is the authority for in in biblical counseling. The third thing is prayer. Prayer is extremely important and. Uh, part of biblical helping because what we are doing is we are asking for the wisdom of God to help us through this or even following a conversation asking the Lord to um, help us sustain through things that have been discussed or bring about new forms of understanding as as we go through that process so something that we do as part of our um, counseling sessions is uh, so I um, you know, just just to give a little bit of uh, an understanding here, um, as part of APC, we do have a counseling center which is called as Chrysalis, and in this center we have both believers as well as non-believers who come in. And, and over the last couple of years, we've had a, a many number of uh, non-believers who've come in for help. Okay, um, so a lot of them do have know nothing about scripture, know nothing about the Bible, they've heard about Jesus, that's about it. But something, um, you know, we, we do fill up, a, they do fill up a form and in that we, we very clearly state 
uh, what our um, what our basis is okay and um, at the end of it we also do invite the counselee to pray alongside with us at the end so that's something that we engage our um, uh, counselees in to pray alongside with them because you know even even if nothing has really clicked in that entire session i've so many times seen that the prayer in itself moves the people to you know to feel uh, something very very supernatural we go back saying and i i felt something very different as as there was a prayer that was going on so we know that prayer is is uh, very effective in just calling down the power of god even to a heart that that may be closed into really hearing uh, of who he is and and what he desires them to do so prayer is an extremely integral part of it so like like we had spoken about the goal of counseling is finally to ensure that there are disciples that people are made disciples of of Christ Jesus okay and to to make him to make them like him so that is what we attempt to do the process of which again the process is very very different for different people however the goal continues to be the same some may go through the process for years some we are just putting in a seed some you know they may, they may flourish and actually build a lot more but nevertheless there is a goal that there is okay uh, in christian biblical counseling the personal qualities of the counselor is not just academic it's not uh, just being good at your skills and at your work but it is also what we say as what we sh it should be spiritual that is the counselor themselves being uh, having um, uh, uh, a vibrant relationship with god you know uh, at a place where they are they they, they have a strong um, uh, knowledge of who they are in christ of being able to also be in tune with what the holy spirit has for them so uh, so that's that's extremely important uh, again it is to be in, integral um, about uh, committing ourselves to building our relationship with God, um, to building our knowledge of God's word, having his wisdom, uh, and also helping to apply it in practical ways. So in, in short, being spiritually mature uh, so that we can be effective towards the kind of work that God calls us to do. Okay? Um, so um, there may be one or two more points that you could, you know, you'll, you'll probably find uh, on your notes, but that's something that, uh, you know, you can, you could probably get to reading as well. Um, I'm going to stop here. We have around five to eight minutes. I want to address any questions that you may have uh, with regard to what we've spoken up until now. Questions. Okay, what are some Holy Spirit giftings that a biblical counselor needs to nurture? So uh, now this I'm going to talk about in my personal experience. I've, I've uh, something that I've really desired and you know I keep praying for is um, uh, to have wisdom and discernment. Uh, you know the gift of wisdom and uh, discernment, because um, there may be many times even as you are talking to counselees, um, a lot of times they they may not completely want to share um everything that uh, um you know that may, may be going on because you know you're you're a new person they're also trying to uh, engage with you building a rapport but i i do see that you know when uh, uh, there's a word of knowledge or there's a there's a, a wisdom that's that's been bought out the way that they light up because for them to know that you know how did uh, did this counselor? How did the counselor understand something, or uh, was it revealed something that I have not spoken about, or I have kept aside? Now that often brings about the question: How did you know? You know, that's that was exactly what I've been struggling with. And how did you know? And I see that as the greatest opening um, for us to bring about you know who we are relying on what is the power that we are working with it's not my own ability it's not 
certain skill. It's not my um, you know psychological uh, uh, understanding of the problem. It's none of that. It's not a model that I'm using, but it is something much more supernatural. So I'd say you know the uh, the word of the word of knowledge is is something that's extremely um, a, a gifting that we can we can pray and earn for desire for more and more as we thank thank you thank you ma'am uh, and also i just uh, uh, I, I just wanted to ask if like of course these would be required right the gift of encouragement of mercy all right all those yeah yeah Yes, sure. absolutely. Uh, and all of that, I think I, I was talking about maybe the, um, you know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the nine gifts among the nine gifts. I think that's what I was dealing with. But yes, encouragement, um, uh, showing compassion. I think compassion is a, is a huge part of uh, counseling. And in fact, if you, if you look at, you know, secular theories, and a few of them we are going to be looking at maybe in our next few classes, you will, you will see how some of this are so, uh, you know, have, have so, so much of biblical uh, principles in it, uh, the, the way that one needs to empathize and how we need to have compassion, how we are non-judgmental, how we are loving, how we are patient, all of that comes, uh, comes in, this, uh, in this entire gamut of counseling. Yeah. Thanks. Any other Thanks. questions? Okay. Either we've understood everything or we've understood nothing. It has to be either either one of this. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, so at, at a work point, uh, we will know that we are in need of counseling. <laughs> I mean, uh, since we are Christians, we, we come back to faith. I mean, we just feel like going back to God, coming back. But what is the spot of counseling? Uh, I mean, I've never heard of it until I came to Bangalore. When I was in Tamil Nadu, I, I never heard of people going to counseling. And I think we don't encourage also. We never told someone to go have some counseling. Uh, we just tell them to go pray, read the Bible. But I, I think this counseling is very important for someone who's really struggling. So at what point someone is in need of counseling? Like? OK. So uh, uh, we couldn't hear you, Pastor. Oh, sorry. Can you yeah. hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the way that we look at counseling often brings us to that point of uh, looking at it uh, through a negative lens. So counseling is not just for those who have a problem. Counseling can also work for those who want to better themselves or who want to develop in something. So actually, when you look at um, you know a counseling base, yes, a lot of people come in for counseling with problems, but there are a whole lot of people who come into counseling because they feel, you know, I'm at this point, I want to get better at the next two, three points. So it's not that they're in a bad place, but they want to just improve and develop themselves much faster or much greater. So that is definitely you know, a, a good way to see. Now, since you asked me, when is the point that one needs to come in for counseling? Um, I don't think there is a specific answer to that. But nevertheless, there is there are points of time maybe when we we sense that the way that we are dealing with a certain situation or a certain uh, circumstance is not optimally helping us. The strategies or the coping that we have used to deal with something is not adequately helping us. And we may need the support of someone else where we can deliberate and talk and engage in a conversation with who will facilitate, like I said, a conversation that will help us think and understand more. So if, you know, um, all of us have gone through issues and problems, the more that you churn it in your own mind or the more that you uh, think about it in your own mind over and over again, you may often find that, you know, you're going into a certain loop over and over again, you're thinking about the same thing. But 
the fact that uh, you have someone to talk to uh, gives you a lot more clarity. So at points of time that you feel stuck, at points of time you feel that your emotions are welling up so much that you're not able to adequately think of something that is uh, helping you, or a point of time that your circumstance is stuck, right? That's when you know, it's a good time to go in for counseling. But I would say even before you reach that point, it's always good to seek help. Because if you're going to someone who's going to help you to, uh, um, what do you say, uh, break down your complex thoughts and feelings about whatever you're going through, it helps to bring a little bit more clarity. So you're taking the complex and trying to make it simpler. So. I think that's a good place to do it. Be proactive and take the support and the help even before you know you're down in the dumps and and finding it really hard to get up. You should be actually be taking help even before that. So that is a quick answer to that. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. All right. We're going to be taking a break. We'll take a 10 minute break and then we come back for our uh, second uh, lecture. So um, you could go grab your coffee, grab, grab a couple of biscuits, and I will see you all in 10 minutes. It's 10.51 right now, and we will be back at 11 o'clock. <laughs> 